Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Don't ask me what happened to the camera here because, you know, I have no clue. That's kind of funny. It's all blown up, but uh, I can fix it like that. Boom. With a touch of a button. So, Hotfix came out for Remnant here. Check it out. Let me see if I can... That's probably about good right there. And uh, this came out last night. I guess... Well, yesterday. They posted this at 11.55 a.m. on the 15th, which was yesterday. Lots of interesting stuff going on here for Remnant. Um, let's go over it today, starting off the stream strong. All right, so they just go on to say, like, we're releasing a hotfix for Remnant platforms. Or for all platforms for Remnant. Uh, with performance improvements, I'm excited to see what those are. Miscellaneous bug fixes and a variety of balance changes. I'm not gonna lie, I cheated and read some of this last night. But uh, first thing is, and there's a couple things that look really cool. But first thing is lifesteal, uh, leech ember, nightmare spiral, riven, tentacle shot, etc. It's everything that has lifesteal on it. Lifesteal is no longer impacted by triage, which is a trait. Um, with the inclusion, the developer comment on that is uh, with the inclusion of the siphoner trait, <clears throat> we found that certain lifesteal items were gaining far too much of a benefit. We removed the interaction, but we've also increased the baseline lifesteal on some items to help balance them out. So this lifesteal builds are getting a little bit of a nerf, which I guess they kind of needed it. I'm not really sure. It still doesn't seem to make Warlord super uh, viable. I mean, I don't know. We'll see. Anyways, flop and unarmed damage. So this one's kind of cool. Um, they reworked how flop damage is calculated. And uh, flop is no longer impacted by unarmed melee damage mod as part of a rework of how flop damage is calculated. With the previous system, it was difficult to produce unarmed melee damage equipment that generated a fun to play flop build and balanced unarmed build at the same time. Uh, and an, a balanced unarmed build. In response to this change, Five, finger, five Fingered Ring and Ring of the Unclean have been rebalanced. Five Fingered Ring has been shifted to uh, open space for the Ring of the Unclean. So um, I think I was watching somebody do the flop build on their Twitter. I'll try to pull that up for you guys real quick. I think I retweeted it. Excuse me, I just woke up too. Sorry for being a little late today. Tweets and replies, maybe. Here it is, yeah, so here's the flop build. <laughs> so, I think it has to do with the, the amulet that you get from fetid pools, probably makes it easier, or just really heavy gear. <laughs> he just did 1300 damage by jumping on the ground on him. So that's what they mean by flop. So there's a viable flop build now, apparently, where you just run up and jump on people. Kind of hilarious, kind of hilarious. Um, corrosion effect, reduced total stacks of corrosion from six to five, 25% of total debuff. After making the changes to how corrosion worked, uh, we found that it became a bit too easy to apply. We left the application, most of the same, rip hive cannon primary, but reduced the total number of stacks from six to five. Remember when we were running, I don't remember if it was yesterday or the day before, but we were running the Warlord's explosive build and we were running Hive Cannon. And what we found was it was just easier to run around with Hive Cannon and it was a single shot on normal enemies, maybe a couple shots on the harder enemies. Uh, it won't be that anymore. So keep that in mind. Achievement, hard bargain. Implement a hot fix for hard bargain to properly trigger. Some wires got crossed, they uncrossed them. Survival mode, prevented burden rings from appearing on corpses. Still purchasable at the vendor. It was an auto-equip thing that was happening where you basically could penalize yourself with the uh, burden rings, just auto-equipping, and then all of a sudden, you know, shit's not healing and you die. Makes sense. Miscellaneous fix crash when interacting with Worldstone while equipped with Undying Mod and Labyrinth Armor. Updated the performance across the board. We'll have to load MSI Afterburn and see what that is. Dozens of various bug fixes. Don't know uh, what all those are, but you know, hopefully they're good. Moving on to trinkets. You got Stone of Unbalance, reduced ranged and melee damage bonus from 15% to 12%. Stone of Balance launched at 10% and they eventually buffed it to 15. It became a bit strong for how easy it was to wear. 
no real trade-off. We feel a slight 3% adjustment was more than fair to keep it in line with the other options that have a requirement. Vulcan's detonator, increased burning damage from Scholar from 10% per level, 20% per weapon level that applies it. So fixed damage scaling to work when procced by summons. A tad too weak, now it's a bit better. Ring of the Unclean, changed it to 100% bonus unarmed damage, 200% total, and plus 300% flop damage, that's a 400% total. Adjustments made in accordance with our new flop unarmed math. There you go. Same thing's gonna happen with five fingered ring. Changed to 25% unarmed melee, 25% unarmed crit damage, and 20% crit chance. Adjustments made in accordance with our new flop unarmed math. Restriction cord. Fixed the UI issue causing the wrong information to be relayed to the UI. Basically the UI would appear to break for all health regen items when restriction cord was worn. They fixed it. Polish Whetstone, reduced crit damage bonus from 50% to 35%. Aw, oh, shoot. Shoot. That's a bummer. <laughs> I'm a crit guy. Is anyone surprised this thing was insane? Now it's just pretty crazy. I mean, yeah. Black Cat Band, increase the invulnerability window from half a second to one and a half second. So invulnerability lasts longer add an additional second for protection now you can actually survive back to back hits once it procs but you better get the safety once it procs scavenger rings add new bonus of 10 percent ranged and mod damage when player collects scrap iron or ammo a nice touch to synergize with your scavenger set however you can also wear it without the armor set it's up to you we don't control you live your life <laughs> these guys are funny butcher's fetish increase crit damage from 10 percent to 15 percent and crit chance which is pretty good and increase crit damage from 20 percent to 25 percent a bit stronger make it more appealing amulet option that actually could be a good option to swap out for uh gunslinger's charm possibly in a crit build Devouring loop, reduce proc chance from six to five percent. No, my favorite ring. That's just one percent. I don't know. Have to play with it, right? Evoker seal, increase the mod power refund from ten to fifteen percent. They increase this just a bit to make it more enticing. While not a massive chance, is definitely noticeable. Give it a try. Okay, burden of the gambler. The burden can no longer be avoided via exploiter and hangman's memento. Just a bug fix. Burden of the Follower. Increase the fire rate burden from 25% to 35%. Increase the fire rate burden. There you go. Okay. For how powerful burden of a follower's primary effect was, we felt that burden wasn't strong enough, so they increased it. Still feel the ring is crazy powerful. Can no longer be avoided. The burden can no longer be avoided via exploiter and hangman's memento. Yep. It's Burden of the Gambler and Burden of the Follower. Armor, getting on to some more good stuff here. The Cultist Armor, uh, increased duration bonuses from 15, 30, and 60 to 30, 60, and 100%. Uh, with recent reworks to armors, we felt that the Cultist was lacking because since it didn't increase damage and the max 60% duration buff wasn't enough to motivate players to wear it. At 100%, it provides a very tangible benefit. And even if the one and two piece bonuses are nicer, that's a lot more. That's a lot more. I mean, that's, that's a hundred percent. There you go. Akari, uh, opportunist set bonus buff from perfect dodging is no longer removed upon taking damage. Still have to get perfect dodging, but that's nice. Warlord, uh, death wish set bonus can no longer kill a player. Leaves a player at one per one HP. This was getting annoying. It was annoying to me because, like, you could just accidentally kill yourself. Like, if you procced it, you know, at the end there. So this is nice. Reduced uh, three-piece damage buff from 40% to 35%. So it's a little weaker, but Death Wish doesn't kill you. Yeah, the damage buff is down 5%. Twisted regrowth set bonus. Reduced stack removal on damage from 5 to 1. Removing five stacks at once felt a little too penalizing. This should make the armor a bit more viable and a lot more lenient. Scavenger, salvager set bonus. Reduced stack removal on damage from five to one. Reworked buff timer to remove only one stack when the timer expires instead of all stacks. So they're reducing 
the stacks stack removal on both of these sets, both Twisted and Scavenger. Kind of nice. Elder, Believer set bonus. Adjusted buff behavior when removing armor pieces. No functionality adjustments, they simply fixed a bug. Mods, Cold Spear. Uh, fix an issue that caused Cold Spear to display improperly when switching between weapons. Oh, they updated the text to better reflect functionality on the machine pistol. <laughs> Alright, Hive Cannon, Hive Shot, Primary Fire no longer applies one times Corrosion Stack. Projectile Impact no longer applies one times Corrosion Stack. And AoE now applies Corrosion at a quicker weight rate. Um, after the 29-23 patch, the Hive Cannon became ubiquitous in almost every build at the highest level. We wanted to promote a bit more variety, so we kept its theme, but reduced how easy it was to instantly apply six stacks, now five. This should bring it more in line with other weapons. So they just nerfed the Hive Cannon. That makes sense. Hello, my friend. Welcome to the stream. Good to see you back here. We're going over the patch notes. Curse of the Jungle God, Tentacle Shot. Tentacle Shot increased the baseline regen per hit from 1.25 to 4.5 to compensate for loss of triage. Um, so, okay. So they buffed Tentacle Shot as a way to... I guess that makes sense. Since the tentacle shots don't change location, we felt it would be more appropriate if they rewarded more health for controlling an area. The increase was partially due to the triage fix and partially due to just making it better overall. Spitfire Flamethrower. Flamethrower fixed the bugs ca causing flame puddles to deal incorrect. Considerably low damage. Okay, so it should just be better. Ah, we will give it a try. Thank you. Fusion Rifle. Reduce pre-fire delay from 0.6 seconds to 0.35 seconds. Cool. And the fusion cannon fixed an issue causing the beam to fire in incorrect directions. See, I felt like something weird was going on with that the other day. Felt like it would like the it wouldn't go where I was aiming it when we were running that. I think we were running it like two days ago. Traits vaccine trait level zero no longer stops you from getting a debuff buildup. Just fixing an oversight and wasteland good boy. They informed Wasteland, very good boy, about the amount of community love he has been garnering. I mean, he's still the goodest boy. So there's the patch notes. 